we are very excited to have between the heart and the word an encounter with the early work of Mykola Bajan reading featured at Globus Books Literary Translation Roundtable as our first show for 2021. So this is the bilingual Ukrainian English collection, uh, Quiet Spiders of the Hidden Soul, Mikola, also Nick, Bajan's Early Experimental Poetry, published by Academic Studies Press 2020. My name is Irina Zabrisky. I'm an author from San Francisco, and I host and produce literary shows for Globus Books. So this event will be in English and Ukrainian, and we have a number of readers here that I will be introducing. Lev Friedman and Oksana Rosenblum will then briefly describe the stages of the project as it grew from a two-person team and a single poem, and then we will do the readings from the volume in Ukrainian and English. Our readers for today are John Frankel, who is an independent poet and novelist, uh, who lives in Ithaca, New York. Dr. Amelia Glazer, who is an associate professor of Russian and comparative literature at the University of California, San Diego. We also have uh, Angelica Kuzhnya, who is a scholar and a journalist and holds an MA in Slavic languages and literature and is a PhD candidate at the University of California, Berkeley. We have Astap Kin, uh, who previously edited an anthology, uh, New York Allergies, Ukrainian Poems on the City, translated Serhii Jadan's collection of poems in New Orthography and a number of other books. We have Dr. Roman Karapetsky, who holds PhD in Slavic languages and literatures from Harvard University, and who is a professor of Slavic literature at the Department of Slavic, Eastern European, and Eurasian Languages and Cultures at UCLA. We have Svetlana Lavichkina, who is a Ukrainian-born novelist, poet, and translator, and who currently resides in Germany. She was runner up uh, the, in the Paris Literary Prize and received a number of other awards. We have Sean Monagle, uh, who is a poet, translator, playwright, and libretist. Uh, and we have Ansley Morse, who is a scholar, teacher, translator, primarily, primarily Russian and former Yugoslav literatures. Uh, Ansley participated in a number of Globus Book Show, and she will appear a little later during the show. We have Bogdan Pichinyak, born and raised in Lviv, Ukraine. He believes in multi uh, interdisciplinary approaches and attempts to balance activism, scholarship, and creative pursuits. Lev Friedman is a speech language pathologist based in New York City. Uh, he is also a literary translator and a writer, worked with the Ugly Duckling Press a lot. We have Oksana Rosenblum, who is an art historian and translator residing in New York City. Uh, her projects have included visual research for the newly created Museum of Jewish History in Warsaw and Moscow. And I represent Globus Books, which is an independent bookstore and has been around and serving San Francisco since 1971. And we specialize in the post-Soviet space. Uh, we also have a great collection of vintage books, antique books, uh, Tam is that, um, and um, other uh, books all you can imagine, including great collection of children's literature. Uh, we run the YouTube show um, uh, channel, uh, and uh, it's dedicated mainly to uh, Russian, Russophone, and post-Soviet space literature, culture, um, and history. Uh, so with that, uh, let me pass the mic uh, to Lev Friedman, uh, who will guide us on this wonderful show. Thank you, Lev and Oksana. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Just wanted to give a little overture of the fact that this group of people before you, even though this is the third time we've read from this book, very nascent book, um, these are things that have never been heard before. We've never heard them before. We've read some of them, we've uncovered some of them, we've rediscovered some of them, but what you're hearing today is what we were hearing today. The acoustics of this are entirely new, so it'll be a discovery for all of us. 
So thank you to Zarina at Globus for hosting our little get together. It's actually poignant to be meeting virtually through a focal point in San Francisco. All three of us editors are based in New York, some 3000 miles away from Zarina, but it so happened that integral parts of this book's conception took place on the same hills as the bookstore resides in March of 2018, where Zarina is right now while I was visiting my late grandfather who was then the oldest living memory of my family's roots in Ukraine. I was coordinating and watching a fascinating scavenger hunt for texts and people who could tackle them. The seeds sown for the tapestry of revitalized, flourishing words and the people responsible, some of whom are before you right now. And I wanna tell you how we got here. This is ultimately a case of momentum deferred, something like thunder inevitably arriving after the lightning that birthed it the sounds you will hear today and texts you will see are the products of sparks of inspiration and exercises of experimentation and freedom that took place almost 100 years ago. I stand by the conceit that this book was inevitable. I literally could not evade it. That it is necessary, that it is now done because each participant in the community which supported them, the size of which I have difficulty comprehending, believed that Mikola Bajan deserved more recognition, that we as a global community, readers, writers, students of history, that we could do better than what had been done, especially so not done up until now. I myself was born in Moscow. I did not grow up with Ukrainian, nor was it ever taught to me. Branches of my family were Ukrainian Jews for a very long time, but my generation was robbed of that language and much else by forces that we all know too well. The first time I really encountered Ukrainian was with my accidental discovery of a side of Mikola Bajan, which to my absolute disdain was also a discovery for many of the people who have spoken the language since childhood. His poem reflecting on what he witnessed firsthand at Babin Yar. The work was little known in Ukrainian, near virtually unknown in the West. I couldn't abide it, it took years but in the end, I was able to assemble a community and a team of translators, some of whom are before you right now, that helped me to return this work to the light in the West and in Ukraine. The book before you is dedicated to much earlier material produced by a much younger Bajan, but the effort that produced this book was rooted in the same thing, the potentially, potentiality born of the discovery of beauty, both of writing and the human that produced it turned kinetic by the drive to share it. A little over a year after I thought I had fulfilled my duty to Bajan's memory, I was approached by Oksana with yet another poem, Razmovis Serdets, Heart to Heart Conversation. Again, a Bajan and a Ukrainian, which was bewildering to me. And now I was actually not alone. It's bewildering to pretty much everybody. And she said, I want more for this more for Brajan, he deserves more. So at this point, I complied. Our naive hope of finding texts which we hope could be found and then getting them translated and the conviction that it had to be done because it wasn't done. And had it been done, we would not have to do it. That's what got us here. We were able to again mobilize the troops who probably thought by then that I was done with them, reactivate the network of scholars, librarians, institutions, friends, a web which was not bound by time zones, borders, or languages, just like the Zoom is not. I want to thank just a very small smidgen of the people that helped us. Yerina Tsimbal at the Institute of Literature Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, collaboration with Taisa Sirarchuk at the Milian Pritsak Memorial Library, National University of Kiev Mohila Academy, the staff at the Vernetsky National Library, Department of Periodicals, and to the Mikola Bajan Museum in Kiev for their ongoing support. Ola Alexik at the Ukrainian Collection, Harvard, Ukra Harvard University Library, and James Kamenowski of Elizabeth Defoe Library, University of Manitoba. So just a smidgen of the community and institutions that helped us. I have no way of actually calculating just how many people were involved in this effort. There were messages flying back and forth at all hours. A friend in Budapest asking another friend in Kharkiv to search for a text. This is what actually was happening in San Francisco while I was on a bus. 
an essay being written between Germany and the Czech Republic, questions posed to the cloud about obscure turns of phrase and puns and metaphors with fascinating discussions emerging, all catalyzed by texts which have proved timeless. Our co-editor Angelica was our guiding light in the deep dives, picking through the signifiers, splitting and then gluing back the hairs, forging a language of language in the process with each of our writers and translators. Waves of confusion and resolution, entropy, chains of contact, life and global events continuing in the meantime. This work survived and thrived. I am holding it in my hand in disbelief. It has been a long time coming, waiting patiently, aging gracefully. So let's take a moment today to admire and receive the young Nicola. Bajan. Thank you so much, Liev, and uh, for this really moving piece. And thank you, Zarina, for organizing this reading. Um, it's really an honor for me to be here, and I'm so glad to see all our translators. Some of them I am virtually meeting for the first time. So um, for me, this project started with a chance encounter. Um, as Lev mentioned, I came across uh, Makola Bajang's long form heart to heart conversation from 1928 uh, from his collection, Budivli Edifices in English. Um, and I didn't know at the time too much about his early poetry. I was really struck by the imaginative power of his work. I approached the translation as an experiment and um, uh, a certain level of lightheartedness was, you know, naive, but it helped me in a way because um, I did not realize at the time what I was getting myself into. In retrospect, I'm very happy that I did become part of this project. Um, I'm grateful to have met and worked with Leo and Angelica my endlessly creative, patient, and dedicated co-editors. Uh, Lev became the true energy blast behind this project. Uh, he was coming up with new ideas at every stage of it, reaching out to a lot of people who lent their support. Um, where I was cautious, at times maybe not very optimistic, he was full of hope and ideas on how to adapt to changing circumstances. And circumstances were always changing because a massive project like this one without a budget uh, relies for the most part on the trust in people's understanding that this work is important and needs to be done. Angelica was our true magus of the Ukrainian language, plowing through the original poems and working with translators one-on-one, -on -one, clarifying the flood of questions and linguistic puzzles that arise during the translation process. Uh, my role was to envision what this book will be, from the poetry that will go into it, to the people who would write the introduction and the afterword, to the cover page and the list of illustrations. Having never worked on such a large project before involving that many people, I was at times left breathless with the sheer amount of emails to write and respond to, text to type and edit, and ideas to play with. There was also a psychological pressure at times, sadly, and the negativity of people who tell you that this work cannot be done. Um, however, what I found is that um, so many more people actually were really positive about this project and were really supportive. So, uh, but at any point I felt that my strength was running out, I reminded myself that all I had been doing was a balancing act, not unlike uh, the balancing act that happens in one of the poems that you will hear today, uh, Bajan, Bajan's poem, Circus. Just a trick, just a flip. And so as parts of the project were going on, going down, the other parts were on the rise. As a compiling editor of the book, I wanted to include the most representative examples of Bajan's early poetry, regardless of how we modern readers might feel about this poet's literary journey. His futurist poetry, of course, will attract many readers. Um, at the same time, I hope that so will 
as well the poems from the 1926 collection, The Seventeenth Patrol, which are dedicated to revolutionary years, or his long phantasmagoric masterpiece, Hoffman's Night, 1929, or his epic tour de force, The Blind Bards, 1930-31, written when he was only 27. A lot of work for this project centered around gathering Bajan's early poems from the periodicals of the 1920s. And this was done basically for the first time, for the first time they, they united in one volume. Um, and locating some of these poems was really quite an interesting and challenging task. Um, I remember that it took us a good number of months to locate um, the sculpted shadow, Risbulnatin, one of Bajan's early uh, collections of poetry. Uh, this meticulous work of gathering the sources shows just how much still needs to be done in order to not only unearth the Ukrainian literature of that period of time, but also to create the necessary critical apparatus and even more. Uh, so how much still needs to be translated? So in a way, I, I see it um, at least for myself and, and my colleagues as well. I see it as a beginning. I want to hope that it is the beginning of something bigger. I would like to to give special thanks to Marko Andrejcik and Emilia Glazer, who were among the early supporters of this book and generously shared their time and expertise. To our translators and consultants who wore hats during the project, Ostap King, Svetlana Lavochkina, Miroslav Shkandri, to Vitaly Chernetsky and Kate Yantuganova from Academic Studies Press uh, for many hours dedicated to the publication of the book. To Misha Vilyatsky, uh, who designed, designed the cover and was really patient with the, all the different ideas we had, uh, how to actually design the book and what, what kind of illustrations will go into it. And many, many more. Um, the moment of transition took a while to register, that moment when you have to remind yourself that you do not have to go back to the PDF file anymore, and I still do it, because the book is here and it's sitting in front of you, and this is the moment I really would, would love to remember always. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Oksana. Thank you, Zarina. And thank you all for coming. So let's move to Bajan. <laughs> yes. uh, because today is the least academic of our presentations and because our presenters and the audience might be equally tired of virtual disembodiment forced on us by quarantine, I will not discuss concepts and influences, but rather remind you about the life and breathing body behind the lines we are going to read today. So. 100 year, uh, years ago, on this day, Bajan is 17 today, 100 years ago. Uh, he's slim, his hair is wavy, and his eyes are blue. He lives in Uman, a town of 30,000 people, so it's the size of Poughkeepsie or Berlin game for East-West associations. Uh, Mikola Bajan dwells under the same roof with his parents, his uh, 13 years old, uh, years old brother Valentin and his nine-year-old sister Alla. Bajan is already a published author, as his poem Haim uh, Moros Radlevo Hvilue, so it's Let's See Deceitful Wave, uh, was featured about a year ago in 1919 in the local newspaper. Moreover, he, already, uh, he has already branded himself together with a couple of gymnasium friends as a futurist spiralist. He also made an ultimate futurist move by suggesting, uh, suggesting to burn a few objects of art from the local museum, some sculpture and painting that he himself early helped to acquire. Uh, just about three months ago, he had an eye-opening aesthetic experience, and avant-garde theater director Les Kulbas came to Kiev with Kim Dramtre, which would later be known as Berezir. 
the troop stayed in town for uh, half a year touring the environs, and Kurbas opened a theater studio for the local news. Bajan auditioned and now goes to rehearsals. At the same time, he continues to attend classes at the local cooperative college, getting ready for the career of an auditor. Uh, Bajan's mother, Helena Arkadyevna, hopes rather than believes that her son's future lies in the accounting and cooperative movement. But what's really in the future? <sighs> this very winter, Bajan's father, Platon Artemovich Bajan, former uh, lieutenant colonel of Russian Tsarist army and former UNR, which is Ukrainian People Army officer, will be arrested by VCK, an acronym for all Russian Extraordinary Committee of uh, to Combat Counter Revolution and Sabotage. He will be put on hold for investigation at the nearby Christinevka train station. With no transportation available, McCall and his mother will now and then walk 12 snowy miles to visit him. Eventually, Platon Bajan will be let go, but he is now a mortal danger to himself and his family. He will go to Crimea and dwell there in a half-legal status for, for the next 18 years. For the rest of his life, Mikola Bajan will not speak openly to anybody, even to his own daughter, about his father's past. Uh, I wasn't able to establish a credible chronology for another event I'm going to mention, but it is known that about the same time, uh, um, Bajan's mother, who was an active member of local Prosvita, and Prosvita means enlightenment, enlightenment, and it was a society for preserving and developing Ukrainian culture and education. So Bajan's mother has spent a couple of months under Chika investigation. She was let go while her friend was shot. And why it's important? I suggest that these are the particulars to remember when you read, say, on uh, page 257 on this book, yes, that Bajan hates the Ukrainian National Republic and the Prosvita Society. Mm, but back to uh, 1921. In about two months from now, in March, uh, Mikola Bajan will give his mother of her birthday a handmade book of poetry. Contrast and Astro, which is probably mood variations, mood swings. Uh, for the general reader, uh, Bajan's young sorrows remain secret until 2016 when the book was mercilessly published by Folio Kharkiv. Overall, it gives a bad reputation to spiral, of, uh, spiral futurism, though a professional reader will, would uh, notice a traceable amount of the poetic DNA of, say, uh, Hoffman's Night of his other expressionist poems. Soon after that, and we are still in 1921, Bajan's house will burn, and the family will spend a few months in some temporary dwellings. In the meanwhile, Bajan will graduate from college and go to Kiev to apply to Tuhan to Baranovsky Cooperative Institute. Um, Google Maps confirmed my memories here. It takes about two and a half hours now to get from Uman to Kiev by car. In the late spring of 1921, this travel took 16 years old Bajan almost a week and subjected him to all kinds of dangers. On his way back, he got sick with typhoid fever and barely got home. Uh, there might be a little doubt that this brave trip attests to Bajan's resolve to leave the province and enter the big world rather than his desire to study cooperation. Seven months from now, Baj uh, Mikola Bajan will move to Kiev in conversation of, uh, uh, at the crossroads published in this book. You will find Bajan's brief but succinct reminiscent of his experience at the Institute of Higher Learning he, uh, he attended. Nenavidzhu to Han Baranovsky Cooperation. I hate to Han Baranovsky Cooperation. Bored by still trying to say what was to be saved for, of his initial career choice, Bajan moves on to study at the Institute of Foreign Relations, Institute of which was organized in 1921 to educate the cadre for international relations and trade. But in 1923, uh, uh, after Ukrainian Narcomat, uh, such as Ministry of uh, international affairs ceased to exist and all, uh, all international relations were delegated to Moscow, the Institute of Foreign Relationships beca became a humble trade college. Trade, precisely what Bajan was running from. 
so he left. Just as most of the poets and writers of his generation, Bazan, Bazan never got any kind of academic degree. Among all writers of his generation, he probably had the best uh, library he started to collect very early in his life. This same year, 1921, tall, somewhat timid, and extremely well-mannered Bajan will attend the readings of the newly founded Aspen Food Association of Pan Futurists. Here, uh, he gets acquainted with the chief Ukrainian futurist, uh, creative and industrious Mikhail Semenko. Semenko will offer him a job, freelance, but still, uh, writing for the newspaper Bolshevik, which was back then the hub of Kyiv futurists. To fit in with Geo Shkrupi and Mikhail Semenko, Nikolai slash Mikola will change his name to Nick. He will work as a journalist, though it will take him another two years to publish in Bolshevik his first poem, Rur Marsh, Rura Marsh. Uh, he will sign it with a pen name, Pan Futurist. And two years from now, in 1923, his poem, uh, Surma Yurm uh, Zurma Swarm, which he now signs as Nick Bajan, will be published in October collection of Pan Futurist. That's Bajan's first book publication. And here I should perhaps refer you to Ostapkin and Ansley Moore's discussion of uh, Bajan's uh, futurist text as the relevant section of this book. I would only repeat after Vera Ageva that Bajan was one odd futurist, as well as one odd leftist who loved art collection, antique shopping, and mahogany furniture. Notice his interest in the futurist aesthetic was superficial if we could compare, compare him to Mayakovsky or even Semenko, but its meaning within the Bajan's poetic paradigm was rather different. Uh, three years from now, so it's 1924, uh, Bajan is 20. Bajan meets uh, with the Baden author uh, Yuri Yanovsky. This, uh, his friendship with Yanovsky will prove to be the most important one in his life. As an outcome of fierce literary discussion, Bajan uh, partly parts with uh, his first mentor, Semenka, and moves to Vaplite, an acronym for Free, Proletarian, uh, Free Academy of Proletarian Literature. A change of acronym is also a change of aesthetic. The Vaplite leader, uh, Mikola Khvalyuvi, is often described as an expressionist. And if we talk about the expressionist in Ukrainian poetry of 1920s, we will talk about Bajan. Four years from now, it's 1925, Bajan is uh, 21. Upon Semenko's invitation, I remember partial partner with Semenko. Uh, so upon Semenko's invitation, Bazan moves to the city of Kharkiv, then the capital of Ukraine, and becomes M. Bush. This is the pen name Bajan uses when writing uh, for uh, and about movies. So he writes a few movie scripts, some of those uh, made their way into movies, and became, uh, becomes an editor-in-chief for the newly founded kin ki Kino magazine. The specialists still consider it an example, uh, exemplary publication uh, about cinema. Five years from now, it's 1926, Bajan is 22, Bajan publishes his first book of poetry, Seventeen's Patrol, and marries Gaina Kovalenko, former Brazil actress and futurist poet, whom he met at the Aspen Food Gathering. Six years from now, age 23, Bajan publishes his second book of poetry, Sculpted Shadow. Seven years from now, in 1928, he writes one of his best longer poems, Goffman Night. To express his appreciation about after reading it, the literary matter uh, Mikola Khvalyuvi stands on his knees about 24 years old poetry. Eight years from now, 1929, Bajan's daughter Maya is born. born. Bajan moves to Kiev back to work at the newly founded movie factory. Nine years from now, in 1913, Bajan publishes in the magazine Life and Revolution his long narrative poem Sleep Tea, The Blind Bars, the most important of his poems and probably the most important poem of Ukrainian modernism. To be precise, Bajan is only able to publish the first two, uh, first two chapters of the intended three or four, nobody knows actually whether it was going three or four, 
because this is when all the hell of the Soviet ideological censorship finally breaks loose on him. Bajran will be accused of all mortal sins available for a man of his stature and occupation. That is, Ukrainian nationalism, formalism, idealism, Zahidnistvo, which is orientation towards the bourgeois West, false romanticism, Dostoevshina, bookishness, bourgeois mysticism, and something else. Uh, the dishonor to start the campaign against Bajan belongs to rap activist Alexander Silvanovsky, but there will be quite a mob to help him. And this is the chronological scope of our book. So Bajan's life goes on for another 53 years. What's left behind? A lot of deaths, a, few uh, a new unhappy marriage, a lot of gov government orders, and five orders of Lenin among them, and awards, a lot of international travel, which is rather unusual for a Soviet citizen, a few painful betrayals, both of Bajan and by Bajan, and a lot of poetry, some of which exceptionally good. But we stop at 1931, 10 years from now. I was going to say that we stop there because this is when Bajan's life goes off its normal course until I realized that too many events in Bajan's early life would not fall under our definition of normal. But if we are to talk about any kind of organic growth and development about the creative evolution in, well, in Bursonian rather than Darwinian terms, 1931 is the year when any and all of it comes, well, not for Bajan, but as many uh, would point out, but Bo, Baj, for Bajan as well, to an abrupt halt. And now we can move to poetry, I guess. Thank you. Um, well, I, I just wanted to start by by thanking you, Liev, Oksana, and Angelika, for staring this, this book to its completion. And it came out at a good time. Reading poetry, I feel, is really important right now, among other things we're reminded of the complex and beautiful world that, um, that is the individual life and experience. Um, so uh, we're going to, Bogdan and I are going to read a poem, The Infinite Road, um, which we translated together. And we've decided to, a little bit unconventionally, begin with the English, so that those of you who are not Ukrainian speakers can kind of have the meaning in your, in your head um, as Bogdan reads the Ukrainian. So I'll begin with the English, The Infinite road. My words may be tangled and terse. They're the only words I have. Nine years of revolution. Here's just a bit about love. For my eyes have been tortured and broken, and my bloodied mouth torn at the seam. Upon this beaten love field I've walked uncertain and drained. Few were our days walking side by side. Few were the dreams that bound us. We part ways on the mangled road. So you go left and I'll go right, and the unformed smoke of dreams will rise over early crops. Part two. Unfamiliar stations lanterns are buried, flickering and dim. An unhappy path lies before my lover. An inevitable road lies before me too. We will walk at night, we will dream in the morning, and we alone will know that we're destined to drown in this fever and in this feverish dreaming. Dust like all these dreams will sift to our feet. And I know along the way, like a joyful load, I'll carry you, wilted and pale. And tireless, I'll carry on along that infinite love road. Part three. When hearts are shaken to the core, what tale shall I tell to my lover? I've swept each corner of my soul clean of love's gold powder, yet still unread, still unrevealed, is our secret notebook, mine and yours. It's hideously tangled, confused, our scroll of ambivalence. Only never disturb that untouched, still unopened secret notebook, hers and yours. What use are its startling contents to you and her? Part four. The evening flight of grieving birds will cast a shadow, pass beyond the fields, the quiet stains of dusk will crawl across the smoky swamplands, tepid moss. A pink bundle of stars will spill on us like fruit, sweet and ripe. This tender, inconspicuous passage connects exhausted days with nights. 
exhausted days, like pointless affairs, these petty city dramas all forgotten. The stage, the striptease, Garrett, Foxtrot, the strength of dry, unfinished pleasures. For in the night's euphoric hours, couldn't our innocence still flower? Before I start reading, I also want to thank Oksana, Lev, Angelika, Amelia, um, and everybody else involved in the project. It's an honor to be part of it. Uh, and just a few words, uh, just to, to give you a background, uh, the way this came, I got, became involved, uh, I just finished actually reading this book that recently came out about Bajan, uh, kind of a literary study of his um, history. Uh, and uh, then I was contacted, uh, I believe in this uh, Jung's idea of synchronicity, you know, <laughs> and I was contacted around the same time. So um, I felt I kind of threw myself in. I made the first translation uh, the best way I could. And then we went through a few iterations and it almost got so frustrating that I almost, uh, I, I think at one point I said, okay, this is it. I don't want to be involved anymore. Um, and then later I think Amelia contacted me um, and, and we finished it. Um, uh, so thank you again, everybody for, um, uh, for making this happen. All right, let's go back to the text. Дорога не сходима, частина перша. Нехай слова мої жмаковані і куці, та інших слів я не знайшов. У рік дев'ятий революції ось тільки трохи про любов. Бо очі зламано у муці, і розпанахано кривавий рота шов. Я на любовному позбиваному луці так змучено і невпевнено пройшов. За мало днів ішли ми поруч. Замало сном ми марили одним, шляхом розірваним своїм, ти йдеш наліво, я праворуч, і встане мріє нестворенний дим над половінням молодим. Частина друга, part two. Завіяно огні чужих незнаних станцій, примружено і пригашено огні. То не розрадна путь лягла моїй коханці, то неминучий шлях лягає і мені. Ми йтимемо вночі, ми маритимемо вранці, і знатимемо ми одні, що захленемось в лихоманці і в лихоманковому сні. Мов пил до ніг, маріння ті впадуть, і знаю на путі, як радість більшою нестиму тебе, зів'яло і бліду. І так не втомлений пройду, кохань дорогу не сходиму. Part 3. Коли серця на коріню розхитано, що оповім коханці я моїй? З усіх кутків душі позмітано любове порох золотий. Та не розкривано і не читано таємний зошит мій і твій. Потворно і складно позаплітано неясного чуття сувій. Але чіпати не посмій, не торкнутий і не розкриваний таємний зошит її і свій. Навіщо змісто і несподіваний тобі і їй? Part 4. Печальних птиць, вечерній перельот, Накинять тінь і зникне за полями, І поповзуть смеркові тихі плями Мохами теплими закурених болот. Рожевий кетях зор розкинеться над нами, Немав солодкий і достиглий плід. Цей непомітний ніжний перехід, Що ніч сполучує з істомленими днями. Втомились дні, мов зайвий епізод, Забуто всі маленькі міста драми, Естраду і панель, мансарду і фокстрот. Снагу сухих, неповних насолод, бо ж у часи вечірньої нестями, хіба не квітне нам цей візерунок цнот? Дякую дуже багато. Дякую всім, хто приєднався до цього дуже чудового волюму. Я вважаю, що всім, хто приєднався сьогодні, я вважаю, що сказати те саме. Я вважаю, що 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 я вважаю, uh, but this one um, was particularly interesting in a number of ways, uh, both formally and uh, uh, thematically, if one is allowed to make that kind of distinction. Uh, but above all, what I mean by that is both of them uh, are in some ways very disturbing acts of violence, violence against language and violence in terms of in thematic as well, with a rather interesting optimistic ending to boot. Uh, I'll read the English first and then the Ukrainian. Uh, the Blood of Captive Maidens. 
tethered firmly the curly paws the ground with his hoof, the sweet milk of fiery mares, seeds in the bottoms of chiseled barrels, scents salty and feral perfuse the air. Warriors sleep as if already dead, and on the ground there spreads the notched design of mighty treetops like a lion's muscular trunk. Luxuriant bushes of bonfires cant to the ground, a stream of smoke braced against the sky, tearing at the threads of greasy rags, like a shoot bearing blooms, a breast reveals its fullness, well moistened in a fecund sweat. Thus were bedewed the captive bodies of fair Ukrainian girls. The maw's been rent, and come the morn they'll sprout, a mongol's noxious fruit inside the maiden's womb. Years wax, the timeless bloom of aftermath, and shafts of memories have long decayed inside the quivers of our hearts. But through the centuries, the offsprings managed to preserve that ancient blood inside, their, it's, it's not, inside its knotty veins. We love words, ponderous like the sudden smoke of premonitory bonfires that for the Tatar glowed. This blood we cosset, dance and vigorously boiled, and greet the vast expanse, a boundless field with a heart simple and full. Krov Polonyamok. Via Cosmo Rudi King Kopetum na Preponi, Kipit na dni podolba nich baril, Solot ke mobokoro spala nich kobil, Pachil la pach nut dikita soloni, Voyovnike tak splat, so smerte ne pochuli. I narodni neruhomo na zemlji ležit u zara karbovane i mohutnih ferhovit, mol levnja muskulasti i tulup. Do dolu uhiljaci ar jasniku šči bahatja i dem strunoju v nebu zvid zi pers, prvučeni tke je zlozenog pšmatja, ne mol kvičena broš tak neče polna pers. V dobru vilihišt vklidni pit zarošeno tila v krajinskih vjasnih branok, i rot rosterzano i proroste na ranok, i proroste na ranok, v divočih čerevah jitke i monholjski plit. Rostuj roke, odvični cvit otav, i v sajdakah srdeć so tlili strili zadok, ta krov staru stolitja me naščadok, v gudzuvatih želah shoronev, Soronjav i ljubimo slova vaški, mu čorni dem, zlovišče vatr, što sjajali Tatarinu, vehovujemo krov tuhu i micnu zvarinu i prostorinj bezmežnu carinu, vitajem srcem kruhlim i prostem. The hub struck me when I first encountered it as pointedly obscure. I still think this, but I believe now it's strategic. Uh, it, the obscurity masks a certain directness. Um, the hops of green legs is not so much an erotic con, playfully plays the bod, renouncing nothing, celebrating desire in all its forms and its dark depths too. Uh, the fragmentary and far-flung images apparently disguise the theme of the poem, yet allow the poet in a curious way to be all the more direct. The hops of green legs lull me, of bodies, tool, Oh, one who eyes in the evening the shimmering shingles of waves. Magus of the gamut and languor, bow your branches. Lie on the keelim, lad of longing, groves of the lagoons. Oh, circle, locks of sorrows, there you are on bare legs, on bare mosses. It's not the goblet that summer tilts, but the hurt. It's not the moans in the hemp's, there's horror of yearnings shade of yearnings, a ground coiling around a circle of pools. There, a skirt. Mene zelenih nih, til, tjul, lulah, mil. O, kto zazraje v večeri na zori, pchvil, slotno tol. Mah gam v tom gila hili čolo, Lagai gai lagun na kijev lehi na na kijelim lehi milon. Okolo lokon lih ovolih nih imhiv tvojih. 
не кели хилити літо то аплахту, не конопельстон жах тух, тінь тух, коло плеса оплетене тло навкруг плахта там. Thank you so much. It's, um, there is something really magical about this poem, I have to say. Every time I listen to it, it's it's a different experience, but I think it, I think when we have read this poem before we have started with Ukrainian, so this will be an interesting reversal, and it gives me a chance to say uh, that as a, at best a beginning student of Ukrainian, um, for me translating this poem was actually a kind of a ultimately futurist experience. Um, it was really interesting to hear what Angelika was saying about Bajan's more complicated sensibilities because for me the the effect of uh, pure sound right um, that many of the futurists were aiming toward was happening quite literally uh, uh, as as the way that he manipulates Ukrainian in in the poem we will read circus um, for somebody unfamiliar with Ukrainian was pure sound poetry um, even though of course in the process of translating I came to see all the sense to it as well. Um, so I'll read, I'll read the English. <clears throat> the poem is called Circus. Jump acrobats, jump upside down and anyway to hell with our tights, heels above our heads. Any Millie Billy Boo my neck will handle it. I declare it's just a game, just a trick. With a pitch black cockatoo playing trick track, here I come, no pants, just like that, a game, a trick, not a track attack, a prank, a prank, a clambering, take the tightrope to the heart's roof, hummingbird of the soul dangling far off, a prank, just a prank, just a raggle taggle dolly, the spring is piquant like brie cheese with a plywood flatbread of fleas, at a jot trot, hop ta ta, heart of a night, Clatter of slaps through jumps over spires, hiccuping, oh, and eyeing. Is this a sketch? Yes. Into the muzzles of naked fairies, the swearing flings like a bed bug, undid belt of peg top trousers, flip flap, trick. I will grunt like a checkered racer at the crumbled balls of a newspaper. Just a trick, just a flip, a hiccup, cuckoos, drop by drop into a firework dusk, full stop. Like a painful torment, further death. Hip, fear, tormented souls. Whips, nails to laughing mugs. Jazz, squeal, thirsty thighs. Nights, pale, blink, squeak. Hip, headlong, souls can can, a whirlwind of beaked kickapoo souls. So laughter on the horse's disheveled mane. Mock the sun's tchotchkes, the tail takes off up. I, a long-legged locust, in this sunny somersaulting game, squeals, stop propeller, thoughts butterfly. Oh, a timid cockatoo presses an upside down soul through the throat, hearts silent. This circus, there's death. And here is the original from 1924, meaning really, really early Berlin. Circ. Skok eccentrici, skok, perekuvirk, setaki, het triko, nohe vishche golove, saki seki tukan karkom v tru, vikli kaju tilki gru, tilki truk. Смирковим какаду в трик трак прийду без брюк атак це гра це трюк не тік атак вибрик карабкається вибрик полинві на дах сердець теліпається душ колібрі далеко десь вибрик тільки вибрик тільки ляльки кики мор пікантна весна мов сир брі і диктові жмихи з блох Підтюбцем, гоп са са, серце лицаря, дзенькоти ляпаса, скоками, шпіцами, гикати, окати, 
Це шкіц? Так. Впики голих фей, блощицею брика матюк, розкручений очкур галіфе, сальто мортале, трюк. Картатим скакуном захрюкаю на скумулеві шпальти. Тільки трюк, тільки сальто. Гикавка капкою кука в фейерверк. Смерк. Крапка, як дика мука. Далі смерть. Гіп, ляк, мук, душ. Стек, цвях, сміх, пик. Джаз, зойк, спрах, кульш. Ніч, бліть, блим, зик. Гіп, сторч, канкан, душ. Випнутих душ кікапу. Смерч, сій, сміх. На лошачий скуйовджений круп. Сонця цяцьки цькуй, Вгору втік хвіст. Я – цибатий цвіркун Сонячної кувиркної гри. Зойк, стій пропелер, Маха он дум. Ой, пне крізь пельку, Лякливий какаду. Душу шкереберть, Серце нічечирк. Це цирк, там смерть. Thank you, Ostap and Aisley, for this very energizing reading. So now we have Svetlana, and um, Sean is going to join as well. Good evening. My pleasure to be here again. And uh, thank you very much, Oksana Lev, for doing all this titanic work. And now you can enjoy the fruit. Um, I wanted to start. Um, by saying that a translator's first encounter with a Bajan poem is like the first eye contact between a gaucho and a wild horse. And a stallion from his artistic prairies is always hot-blooded, and the only way for the whisperer to tame it is to learn its ways. So I've had the simultaneous privilege and the ordeal to tame, more or less, uh, five poems for this volume. And I would like to read um, two. In the second poem, I will be joined by Sean. He will read the English version. And um, the poem I am going to read now is Imobi of Galam. And uh, here we are spellbound contemplators of a battle scene painted by a pan futurist crossbreed of Miro, Dali, and Gauguin. And we're torn out of our tempered comfort zone of steppes, fields, forests, and teleported to the West Africa of the late 19th century, into the eerie night of a Senegalese slave uprising against the French colonists. It should be added that, um, written almost a hundred years ago, Imobi of Galan would be declined by contemporary publishers for racism and chauvinism. Yet, uh, Bajan uh, wrote it a hundred years ago and we can contemplate this poem under this lens. And it is a razor thin line for the translator to balance between the loyalty to the original and, uh, well, um, and modernity. So I'm going to read the English version first. Imobi of Galam. When in the papyrus sedge birds scream aghast and the sky is congealed in a clot of black musk, a knight of the old Maghreb faith prowls in the wild wood. The stars claw the sky crab-like, the silt of dusk squelches the earth, and in the ruddy baobab shade, glazed buds of eyes burst into blossom. Imobi from the land of Galam, and with him thousands of slaves on the riotous night to the balls of Tam Tam loaded a rusty carbine. It's not marabou calling and bayou, nor women slapping their wineskins of breasts. It's the Tam Tam sending news to the slave. Dreary sighs become blasts. Anguished night of upheaval and yearning, in the reeds, a black shapes a stir. The white-skinned spahi can't fathom why the desert is reeking with blood. Thirsty night of woe and upheaval. Moon-ruffled banana treetops. And a Senegal slave named Amobi. 
skulked under the whitish fringe forest. The land of Galam didn't shudder, Senegal calm in the reeds, only the yellowish sand dunes munched by the dry lift wind. Like a hungry hyena, the wind sucks the Sahara sand, swollen and dazed soldiers' eyelids, they'd swilled their last of scent. The cold Mauser, numb in the corner, soldiers' lips are frazzled with songs. Whoever would leave the blockhouse at these short hours of the morn, and in the Sahara Desert, the wind is mauling the din. Over the Sahara Desert, the searing hiss of the wind. Crackly dunes chafe to blisters by the night of the rebels' feet. The dusky banana tree whisper ever closer. The grass thicket swash. The sky was hit by the howl, and the warden zouave woke up. Hey, you wind, blow your rose full blasts. Scare the Senegal dunes with your screams. In the spy chest, spy heart bloated and throbbed. The spy heart leapt out and dropped. The rattling mitrailleuse tongue slashes the womb of the night. Scarlet myriads of stars are in blossom, in tamarisk dawn on the dew. His forehead peppered with blood, Imobi sank in green silt. Oh, on his bronze colored chest, no amulet tinkling gray green. Night fell on the Sahara Desert, hauled its heavy womb through the sand. A bobby choked in the mire where the crooked tree fell, slashing the sky with its groaning. Hyena howl crept from the night's thighs. For you, the dark land of Galam, a bobby decayed in the mire. Lusty night of Baobab blossoms, indolent. Will they recall the flies swarming in Imobi's mouth, bloodstained and torn? It wasn't only Imobi who left his heart in the dunes, decayed in the fangs of papyrus, for a weird alarm to wake up the harsh hiss of the sand. Let the Senegalese become simums. Let Imobis be warriors, not slaves. Let the purple roar of upheaval punch the blockhouse in the face. And now Ukrainian. Коли в папірусах злякана зойкнуть птиці, і чорним мускусом згусне небо, в гущавині лісу ховається лиця старовинної віри Магреба. В небо в зорі в'ялися, мов краби, в землю на мулом в грузла тьма, а під листям рубидих баобабів розцвітає очей у май. І моби з країни Галамом, і з ним тисячі чорних рабів, в ніч повстання і зойки там-тама, і ржавий набили карабін. То не на плесі кричить марабу, не жінки б'ють бурдюк грудей, то там-там дає вість рабу, понуро зітхає й гуде. В ніч повстання жалоби з гаги, в очереті ворушиться негр, і не знають білошкірі спаги, чому кров'ю пустила тхне. В ніч повстання, жаглі і жалоби, місяць верхів'я в банані вгрався. І подповз чорний раб і моби під білявий французький блокгаус. Не здригнулась земля галаму, очеретом не хитнувся Сенегал, тільки вітер сухими губами жовтавий пісок легав. Тільки вітер пісок Сахари, мов голодна гієна ссе. Бії солдатів на бракли від мари, і останній випито абсент. Рвуться уста солдатів піснею, Німіє в кутку холодний маузер. Хто порою пізньою вийде за ворота блокгауза? А в Сахарі вітер неган, в Сахарі вітер сичить, Розлятрена чорними ночами хрумтливі дюни у ночі. Шепче присмерть бананових дерев, Це ближче плеще гуща трав. А коли в небо вдарив рев, вартовий прокинувся зуав. Гей вітри на чотири боки дми, зойком дюни злякай Сенегала. В спагі серце спухло між грудьми, в спагі серце ввірвалося і впало. Брезкотливий язик мітральєзи, черво тьми перебоєм розсік. Кривавий зір розцвітає безліч під тамаристами на ранішній росі. Засіяний кров'ю лобом негр в намул зелений вріз. О, на бронзових грудях і моби не дзвінять старовинні грі-грі. І на Сахару упала ніч, 
зашаруділа по пісках важким черевом, здригнувся й моби і захлинувся в багні, де стікнулося скорчене дерево. З тогоном небо розкраяв, з тего ночі підповз вигієн. Це для тебе галами чорний краю і моби в пісках гниє. Весною знов пахне бамбули і грудей жіночих чорний чад. І серце галама про все забуло, і все віддало своїм ночам. В ніч бабули кохання й жадоби, млосне й згадає хто, як мухи повзливі моби в роздертий кривавий рот. Не один і моби в серці в дюни виклав, і в іклах папірусів згнив, щоб виклик збудив незвиклий, жорстке шепотіння пісків. Бути негру самому самумом, бути негру не рабом, а бійцем, і повстання багряним шумом вдарити блокгаузу в лице. And uh, now a uh, short poem. It is lovely. Well, it is as lovely as it is tragic. And it's called Lovage, Lubistok. It is a tragic story of love. And uh, just I'm plunging into it. Zpidvi blakit na tin, oznaka nestemenna. Jeruževi slid na grudach denede. А він стромив вже ногу в стремена, і кінь баски вже гривою пряде. Лишилася сама, каха, коханка безіменна, і дивиться на путь, де курява паде. Одного вечора, як праця цілоденна, кінчиться геть дитину приведе. Та прокричить недовго немовля, і лиш в садку, де скопана земля, розквітне рута і проросте любисток. Вона ж сапатиме поля, і сама не знає від кіля, від кого день і ніч чекає тайних звісток. Lovage. Blue umbra fell around her eyes, a fateful sign. Pink traces here and there on her breasts. But he already put his foot into the stirrups. His restless steed is shimmying its mane. He left his nameless lover all alone. She looks along the path veiled in the sinking dust. One evening, when her day span grind is done, she will bring forth a child. In the hut, the newborn will end, emit a short lived cry. And in a forlorn garden, on that patch of disturbed ground, rue buds will bloom and lovage stems will sprout. By day, she'll till the fields the same way as before. By night, she'll weep. She won't know from whom she yearns to hear. And um, John and I would like to read uh, from the translation that we did of one of Bajan's longer poems, Rosmova Sardet, Heart to Heart Conversation from 1928. And um, it's a rather phantasmagoric journey. Um, in which the lyrical hero encounters its double or shadow, if you want, and travels through um, his internal world with a detour uh, to the Russian Empire and um, and the present time, present time for him. So we are talking about late twenties. You strike a thundering drum made of human skin. Humans have fewer wounds, but plenty of ugly tears. A draft, not wind, whistles inside a chest. None will or have erased the trademark from filthy rags. I curse and tear your filthy trademark. Don't curse, since I am you. Since you and I are always one, we walk as a couple, too. My shadow drags itself from pole to pole like a cunning explorer. It never met, not once, a heart that was closed. To the feast of madness and stupid acts, I brought my heart and a deck of cards. What a lovely joke, wittier than a suicide. In the pubs of the world, I desperately gamble as if a mad and drunken croupier. I take three partners for myself, a murderer, a poet, and a hooker. I shoot the cards on the moldy surface. The night spreads out to the sides like black veins in a drunkard's heart. 
The murderer sends a signal first by squeezing the round wound of a penny. We fold ourselves over the table. The hooker bets with the gift of a kiss, a stinky ring she rips off her mouth. The poet, pale, sits on the edge of a table and pays his part with a cheap deck of phony words. My crumbled heart is squeezed between long fingers and I am the richest one in this gang. Oh heart, my heart, don't be sad on the gallows of dirty tables I place you, nocturnal sacrifice in the midst of the human farce. I play around and I always lose. My heart is sitting on a table. I let the plasma lie in the dirt. All winds on the surface of the earth, spasms of superhuman inspirations, hold my throat in a convulsive twist and beat my chest. The night is almost over and my path is glistening. But where will I go? My chest is tight and silent. My poor heart, a poor mouse, cannot gnaw through an obtuse angle. No need to know. I pass through many pubs, churches, markets, and graveyards of countries. I found nothing apart from ruined hearts, twisted conversations, and folded knees. I searched for, am I blabbering? Words, femmes, and dreams, but not my lost heart, it seems. Under the slush of nighttime minutes, in the filthy pub, unlike a lonely beggar, I have not stretched my hand, clumsily holding onto my torn heart. Let the fuzzy haze be blessed, the dry bones of walls be tainted. Emaciated sadness and prolonged anguish float by like a drowned body. When even mornings come along, those focused lonely hours, the fevered engine shakes my body. Your signal calls me out to fight. Your arrogant, dull, and confident measures march over me. Damnation. I won't prevail. Not here, not now, no way. My heart leads me down a path I can't refuse. Bijete vromokei baraban, u baraban iz ljudskih škir. Людей замало в серці ран, зате багато дір. І то не вітер, протяг то в грудях людей свистить. Не змиє і не змив ніхто клейна з людських лахміть. Клину і рву твоє клейно, не рви, бо я, то ти. Бо ти і я завжди одно, і нам у парі йти. І тінь моя країною береде, столика тінь отця. І не зустріла ще ніде зачинені серця. Я на банкет безумства і глупства Несу в кишені серце і карт колоду повну. Милий жарт, дотепніший за самогубство. І в кабаках землі веду отчайну гру, Як божевільно п'яний банкомет. І трьох партнерів я собі беру, То вбивця, шлюха і поет. І карти кидаю з руки на лишаї процвілі столика. І ніч розлазиться в боки, мов чорні вени в серці алкоголіка. І вбивця перший робить знак, стиснув у руку похололу, мов круглу рану мідяний п'ятак, і ми згинаємось до столу. Повіяв банк для гри дарунок, мов перстень здержи з губ дає, дання невитворне своє, смердючий шлюх і поцілунок. Поет блідий сидить між нами за столиком на самому краю і частко сплачує свої дешевими й фальшивими словами. Зім'явши серце в довгих пальцях, найбагатіший я між них. О, серце, серце, не печалься, на ешафот столів брудних кладу тебе нічну офіру серед вселюдського трактиру і граю партію свою і програю, і завше програю. Лишаю серце на столі, нехай лежить у бруді плазма. Усі вітри землі, всі подихи землі, немов натхнень над людських спазма, стискають горло, груди б'ють, і ніч кінчається, і мені лисніє путь. Але не знаю я, куди тепер іти, 
Коли у грудях цупко, тиша, І бідне серце, бідна миша, Не прогризати у пікути. Не треба знати, я пройшов багато кабаків, І більше ще церков, і цвинтарів країн. Ніде нічого не знайшов, Крім серць пощерплених із вигнутих колів, і зігнутих колів. А я шукав, чи то верзеться, і слів, і женщин, і уяв. Лише одного не шукав, загубленого серця. І під сльоту нічних хвилинок серед брудного кабака не простягав, як руку жебрака, незграбний серця в тину. Благословенна кіш лимула і сухореврих стін осуга. Куда печаль і довга туга, мов потопельник, пропливла. Але приходять рівні ранки, часи уважності, години самоти, і потрясаєш тіло тих машин, коли хоманки, і подаєш до герцю знак ти, і марширують по мені упевнені, нахабні і нудні твої прокляті такти. І я тебе не переможу, ніяк, ніколи. І ніде, і серце в путь мене веде, і я знайти не можу. How can interested readers get the book? Can we get it in the United States? I know I have listeners in Europe. What is the best way to uh, buy the book? Every major distributor, I mean like down to Target, a bunch of, uh, I don't know, Waterstones, for instance. You can order it through pretty much anyone. You can order it directly through the publisher, through Academic Studies Press. You can order it from bookshop.org, I believe. Uh, that's the, the one that helps the indie bookshops. Right, and I want to add that in the United States, Globus Books will be carrying the book. So if you want to support your independent store, we'll, we're here for you too. Maybe we can um, add some layer to the history. I really enjoyed the biography that Angelica uh, read in the beginning of the reading. And it's fascinating. And I'm sure there is much more uh, about the path of, of this poet and his poetry there. So Angelica, is there something else that you did not include in this uh, biography that you would like to share with us? There's so much going on there in this history a hundred years ago that I'm sure there are events, forming events that would be interesting to hear. First, and again, as I told, it was a long life and uh, it was another 53 years of life, yes. And, uh, you know, Bajan, Bajan is complicated and like whenever we, and specifically, Bajan is especially complicated. Uh, like there is a few, um, one can single out a few subplots in uh, Bajan's life, um, I would say, like if I were asked to do this, I would definitely single out a subplot of Bajan's relationship with Yanovsky, who was his friend and whom he kind of deceived and he was tormented for this. He deceived him in, it was like a last and like heavy round of repressions uh, what, after war, like 1947, 1948, when uh, Mm. Bajan wasn't really happy what he was made to tell about Yanovsky. Yanovsky never forgave him and Bajan tormented himself until the rest of his life. I guess I read um, somebody, Honchar, um, recalling Bajan uh, having sleepless nights over what he told about his friend Yanovsky already uh 20 years that i guess uh, as late as uh, i guess uh, 1970 something so that's one subplot and uh, another uh, interesting subplot is uh, bajan and tachina because tachina was uh, tachina was older and tachina is like everybody knows him like this is the poet of, uh, so to say, uh, uh, like Ukrainian Renaissance. And uh, Bajan was first, 
uh, Bajan was really excited about Tachina, about reading Tachina's uh, first book, and he recalls it with fascination. Uh, he was, uh, I guess, 15 years old when uh, um, first Tachina's book appeared, and everybody agrees that that was the best Tachina wrote. It was a very strong start, and that is my, my favorite book in uh, uh, Ukrainian Renaissance. So, <clears throat> There was this influence, there was this older poet, like absolutely uh, astonishing, uh, bright, marvelous uh, book, uh, which uh, Bajan was affected by. And then, uh, the, uh, then they got acquainted at some point, uh, definitely with uh, Tachina. And then, uh, and again, there was this relationship of uh, older matter and then younger, not, not exactly pupil because it was impossible to learn from Tichina, but it was impossible to be like Tichina, but like definitely he was the poet for Bajan, like for as long as he lived. And then what happens next, like repressions? Yes, there comes uh, 1932 when uh, Bajan's, uh, Bajan writes his poem about Lenin and Tachina uh, also already writes his poem about Lenin and party, which are completely relevant to what he did earlier for the, for the previous uh, 15 to 17 years. And then <clears throat> at the same time, like basically on the same day, they get like uh, order of Lenin and it was uh, 1938. And this is what saved, actually this, is, this order of Lenin was what saved Bajan from uh, uh, being shot, and this is uh, most likely this is what saved Tachina from being shot, like because this was some kind of it was a big thing, yeah, to have, uh, to have order of Lenin. So Bajan was able to bring his father back and so on. Uh, and then uh, you know their lives go just side by side because they dwell in the same apartment building uh, on Rolit, now famous. And then again, they move, they also hold all sorts of government -like positions. Mm, so Bajan is more prominent in these terms, but still. And then uh, they would live in the same uh, uh, very good apartment building, like as well, Soviet nomenclature maybe, on uh, Tereshenkivska street. There will be same, uh, you know, uh, I remember that building on Tereshenkivska where both Bajan and Tachina live at the end of Tachina's and Bajan's life and this is where Bajan died. So even I remember this building in 1989 and there was still this person sitting there and you never know whether it's a doorman or a KGB officer, but most likely it was both. So every day, like both of them had to pass in and out, like past this uh, KGB officer who was definitely reporting on every their move. I mean. So there, there's, you get these, these snippets uh, that are absolutely, and there's so many of them that are absolutely insane. There are a couple of monsters in this book that have not peeked their heads out during this reading. It'll be impossible to do all of it, but um, for instance, uh, Slipce, the blind bards, right, which we had, uh, Chotrapovich, who was working on this poem since roughly Woodstock, comes up in the CIA archives right now. You can find it on Google because it was being repressed. They were monitoring it. There are stories that he, we heard some of this when Oksana and I were calling Ukraine, talking to people that he had to burn um, parts of it because he was scared. Um, you know, it's an old Soviet trope. You know, manuscripts don't burn. Apparently they do. Um, you have the stories about Bajan having to sleep on benches right around the time that he was uh, awarded instead of being shot. Um, then you have uh, Get the Woman, for instance, the Ghetto and Uman, which we did not have represented in this, uh, in this reading. He wrote a poem about his hometown, and he always considered himself part of this larger uh, continuum, which included Jews. Uh, and uh, after writing Ghetto and Uman, which was very careful, but described quite a bit of anti-Semitism, you then have him being called the humanist, the humanist 
you know, they made, they made fun of him for, for doing these things. Um, so yeah, that there's, that there's, there's a lot, you know, they, they say that he would, it was a, de- it was like, a, it was like a death of a thousand cuts. It's Chinese torture. That's what, that's what people described him going through and also describing himself as from a subjective standpoint. There's a question that Andre is asking, how did it happen that starting so brightly, Bajan turned into a Stalinist and official Soviet poet? Um, I have to add that these questions come up during our shows quite a bit because pretty much any poet you take it has a Lenin poem or a Stalin poem. As I haven't had the chance to to talk about this or any of this with anyone who knew Bajan, but you just have to keep in mind that in those times there were not that many scenarios of what could happen to you <laughs> if you were, you know, um, a modernist poet, a futurist, um, or or a talented poet. And so um, I think that Bajan. Um, suffered a lot and he must have been in shock when when he received that um, uh, award for translating Shotaro Stavelli poem by um, award by Stalin and um, I think that on some level he decided that this was a chance for him to survive and that this was a chance for him to do whatever he could for Ukrainian culture, and he actually did a lot, you know, um, including, you know, editing Ukrainian encyclopedia, and um, so that's that's what I would say about uh, about the possible reasons of what of what happened to him and why he chose that. It's probably harder for us to to come up with an answer to this question. It's easier to come up with this answer being on that side of history, but would anybody else uh, like to add to that? In this case, in case of Bojan, it is interesting. I would like to recall um, the audience, um, I don't know whether all of uh, you, or like any of you, some of you read um, most recent uh, Sofia Andrukhovich's novel, uh, Andrukhovich novel about Amadoka. So she has like there when she writes about um, um, uh, Ukrainian like literary twenties, uh, she has this list of uh, people like all sorts of people like Ukrainian writers, uh, uh, like left leaning, right leaning, like. All, all kind of people, like whatever they, they deceive other people, they so uh, and it doesn't really depend like uh, what line of um, uh, behavior, so to say, like uh, what uh, they committed to, but still at some point, like if you are Ukrainian, if you write in Ukrainian, there is this threat, like so, even if you are like. Uh, as left and uh, as left as it gets, like still, like if you report on uh, like on each of your neighbors, like you're never safe. Like, and she has this. Uh, Sofia Andrukhovich has uh, this numerous stories of people who were like uh, behaving, so you say, the proper way, and still were uh, still were shows as they were executed and so on. So, I mean, uh, why I'm talking about this, it's interesting, and I do believe uh, that this is the truth, that in case of Bajan, it's not his uh, now famous, uh, or at certain times, uh, f- famous uh, Lenin uh, poem, Ludina Stage Zoranosnim Kremli. It's it's not this because it was possible back then. It was like highly possible to write about uh, Lenin or Stalin or whoever and still be executed. And this is, by the way, what happened to Mikhail Semenko, like Bajan's futurist mentor, because uh, 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 basically it was same story with Semenko because Semenko, so he's a futurist, like for 15 consequent years, and then in I believe in 1931 or 1932. Uh, 
he publishes totally different book because he understands like he realizes what's going on around him and he understands that there is this danger like immediate uh, uh, danger to his life and he publishes a book which is completely unrelated to uh, futurism so to say it's very uh, proper so to say and still it doesn't save him and Semenko is uh, shot in uh, 1938 I believe in Bukovnia and there was great likeness to this very thing will happen to Bajan and what saved him was not like his uh, like ideological twist, not, not his ideological plasticity, but it was this uh, very good translation, like yes of course it was from Georgian, it was this uh, poem who also said like later like, uh, quite a few years ago, Zabolovsky also translated this into Russian, and it was like kind of this is what saved Zabolovsky career in a way. Uh, but still, it was this good translation, good work. So it's not that uh, what saved him was, I believe, that what saved him was not his ideological plasticity, even though there was some. But uh, the fact that he was this good poet who was able to do this good work. Speaking of Zabolotsky uh, and uh, taking it a step in a different direction, we do have another question I uh, hear coming from Dmitry Manin, who is watching us on YouTube. Dmitry says, I was struck by the circus poem. Circus was such a prominent subject for early modernists, both in painting and poetry, including, for example, Zabolotsky's columns. Uh, maybe Ensley can speak a bit about Bajan's specific treatment treatment of the subject. Ensley had to leave to teach. Uh, maybe later somebody will come up with the answer. My question was related to Bajan because uh, he was not the only futurist poet or avant-garde poet at that time. And uh, his colleagues chose a different path, whether it would be Simonko, Shkurupi, or Valerian Polishuk. Uh, they didn't become Stalinists, they didn't become Soviet writers, and more, furthermore, it had nothing to do with the Ukraine. Semenko was shot by the Ukrainian in KVD. It didn't matter whether you were Ukrainian or Russian, it was the general path for the Soviet poet. And by the way, it didn't save Zabolotsky. He spent eight years in the Gulag just because he wasn't shot only because he refused to um, give any data on any one of his poets when he was arrested in 1938. That's all. I was just curious why in Bajan's case it was such uh, an incredible turn uh, because he starts uh, with Peter Kryostak and he starts with Baraban and he starts with, with Cirk and then suddenly he becomes a completely surrealist. He becomes a complete surrealist. It's just uh, really interesting because even Rilski or Tychina didn't have this denouement as Bajan had. We have this hard time with survivalists, yes. We can forgive we can forgive a lot of people. We can even forgive uh, 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 um, you might not remember um, Semenko's, uh, so to say, pro-Soviet poetry because it's less publicized, but there was something, just trust me, like it's, uh, he published something, uh, like there was some pro-Soviet, very pro-Soviet poetry. But like, nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, we have hard time with survivalists and we always ask, why didn't you die with when everybody else died? Yes, which is... Um, first, I'm not sure we can do this, but we still ask, yes. And uh, I remember, uh, okay, there was this story with uh, Bajan, I guess Leonor Rosolova recalls it in, again in uh, our book, uh, when uh, uh, Bajan came uh, like for, for, for a talk in Zhovtnevoy Palace 
and uh, uh, students who are, like, who are present in the audience uh, just started like um, Людина стоїть в зореносній кремлі, and he was, uh, I mean, Bajan was very, Bajan was lost, and then he started talking about people who were executed, like, to explain his position, like, to explain why he was, uh, uh, as if to explain his position, to explain why he wrote that he started, like, talking about all the people that were short uh, in Zhovtnevi uh, Palace. Uh, but again, why, 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 uh, why, why he was left alive? And I think because somebody, if you ask, nobody knows the answer for sure. Definitely there was no conspiracy, there was like, he was not amazing, whatever. Uh, but um, somebody had to do this work, yes? Somebody like speaking of Tachina. Some uh, Tachina wrote Ukrainian anthem, yes, of uh, Soviet uh, Soviet Ukrainian anthem. Like somebody had to write that, so Tachina wrote it. Like somebody had to translate that uh, uh, Soviet anthem into, I mean, uh, Russian uh, Soviet anthem into Ukrainian. Bajan did that. Somebody had to edit that Ukrainian and some Tachina wrote when Stalin died. Bajan did that. They needed, at the time, back at the time, they needed, uh, right now it's, for us it's a bit of odd because we don't need, uh, I mean, uh, we, it shouldn't be, like our state, like whichever state we are talking about, uh, United States, Ukraine, or whatever, Russia. They don't uh, really need uh, literature to function properly, yes. Like we can do without writers, we can do without poets, and it will be the same state. But back then, it was still important. They needed people who can uh, write well to function. Uh, I, I wanted yeah. to say that I'm very happy about this book because I don't have a problem with survivalists, vice versa. I have problem with Rastrelina Vazrajdenia because before that in Ukraine, they only published those who perished. And uh, first the edition of Ticino in translation to English, and now your edition, which is fabulous, is, uh, is a big step forward away from that. And uh, I'm really happy that you collected his early poems that were almost forgotten under those that came later. And it's wonderful that he survived because his contribution to Ukrainian poetry is tremendous. It's immense. It's really incomparable. And also, I have to say, his contribution to Russian poetry because Bajan was lucky with uh, his translators. He was translated by Bagritsky, by Postupalsky, the creme de la creme of Russian translators. So thank you, thank you for your book. We had um, another question uh, and that is uh, in relation to something that Svetlana said, uh, that when uh, the translators work on the poems that are 100 years old, they have to take in consideration the, the prism, the lens of history or to take a different perspective and there's always a fight between trying to be loyal to the text and make it um, make an adjustment so it can uh, not insult readers uh, of today. So Svetlana, would you like to perhaps comment on that? What particular adjustments had did you have to make or uh, how did you work around these limitations or that challenge? I don't think that uh, it was much of a hard work. Actually, the hardest work was on the metaphors and on the rhythm and on the rhyme. As for avoiding like sexist or racist um, words that are forbidden right now, that are bad manners, uh, you definitely soften them and still there is the there is the sense preserved and well if i well 
had I known about this question before, I have the text in front of my eyes and uh, well, in Imobe, we have Neger said a lot of times and so in the original we have uh, the Negro shape is stirring. Of course, I will have, the, I, I did in the reeds, a black shape is a stir. So <laughs> this is what I did basically, right? Then, it pit pops chorni rab imobe. The black slave imobe crawled, yeah. Uh, what I did was, and a Senegal slave named Immobis. It's like jumping around a little bit. That was not a problem in a way. So you only have to be aware of it while translating. And as uh, modern translators and uh, also modern readers, we're sharply aware of the um, utterances which are bad manners nowadays. What I, as a moderator, I love about our discussions, how there are all these difficult questions and sometimes heated questions, or sometimes questions to which we don't have answers right away, and it's something food for thought, or for me, it's a clue uh, where to take Globus uh, on the next journey, what to explore and invite more people to discuss it. There are certainly repeating themes of, um, ideology in the post-Soviet space and the history of the, uh, of the former Soviet Union uh, language space literature. Uh, it comes up during almost every show. It's a difficult question. And I think we received really great answers to that today, but it leaves the space and it's an invitation for people to, to write, to uh, have suggestions of what else we can um, go into during these discussions. In answer, not facetiously at all, in answer to, or in response to Andrei before also, maybe this discussion warrants another book. Again, not, you know, this is usually the way that, that you finish things. Well, maybe we should have a sequel, you know, and then the credits, and then you have a little snippet of the sequel. But really, though, much, there is much to be discovered, and there is. You know, if, if that's, I'm, I'm the producer, I don't play the instruments, you know, but I do get a feeling after we've put all these people together, after we've looked as much at things that people haven't looked at, that people have looked at, that there's more. And these are wonderful questions. I'm so glad that we had people asking questions and we had us looking at each other and wondering because we've never had this conversation before, even though we put this book together. And we've never heard each other read any of this. So it's wonderful. Thank you. I think it shows the great shift, you know, altogether that uh, you, uh, the, the input of this book is more than anything else is, is a, a big uh, shift in rebuilding the real history of Ukrainian literature and bringing up uh, those names that have been uh, put on the back burner since the independence. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that, that uh, you know, Tichina and Bajan and Rilski, those who were deemed uh, official representatives of Ukraine in uh, the Soviet literature. They deserve to be presented at the same level as uh, those who became, you know, cult authors after independence, whether it's Simenko, Oshkurupi, or even Mikola Zerov. And I believe that your book is this great shift of bringing the history of Ukrainian literature into coherence. And that's what I'm grateful for. And, and of course, the tremendous effort of putting so many authors under the same cover, translators, biographers, commentators. Amazing, amazing job. Thank you. It's been an incredible journey. And um, again, I'm just really grateful for all the work and all the patience and um, as I said you know this project went through so many stages and at some points we 
we were not sure whether it will happen or you know which publishing house is going to work with us but um at the end you know i'm really happy that things worked out and i do agree with Liv that um hopefully we can do a continuation and maybe we can look at some point at Bajan's, you know, literally career past this point, um, which should also be better known, especially to the Western reader. So thank you so much. And thank you, Zarina, for helping us with this event, for inviting us. Of course, it was my pleasure. And I'm excited to be open in the uh, new direction to explore. I, I want to bring up another program that will be coming on February the 8th, um, the same time. And it's also Ukrainian Futurism, but this time modern Ukrainian Futurism. It will be a futuristic novel by Vadim Yakovlev. I'll try to do the, the title in Ukrainian, Tam de Pachinaitsa Territoria. There will be also a discussion of the Ukrainian literary uh, process at the moment with the Kayala Publishing House. And we are working with some other publishing houses located in Kiev at the moment. So it's just the beginning. If you have ideas, please contact me. We are open. Uh, we are now booking shows for late summer and fall 2021 because there's so much to explore. But I'm looking forward to everybody's input. And thank you so much. It's a tremendous work. I can't wait to have the book in Globus to read it and to present it to our readers. Thank you so much, everyone.